Hey, what's going on? My name is Andron, and in this video, we're gonna be creating a Flutter application uh, that converts your device's microphone input stream into some usable data that could be automatically reflected within your user interface uh, whenever you get louder, quieter, or just anything kind of happens uh, that changes the, uh, the data that's kind of coming in through the microphone. So as you can see here, we have a volume indicator, and we're gonna keep this application relatively simple at first. Uh, just because it'll make it easier to import the fundamental idea behind this project into your existing projects. Also makes it easier to dive into this and then kind of go crazy on your own. Um, but then we'll also build upon this in the future and then maybe make some responsive widgets that grow in size or change in color uh, depending on the data that's coming through the microphone. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I'll also have the code for uh, what we have finished here today linked down below in a GitHub repository. Uh, but yeah, let's just uh, get started and dive on into this. All right, so now in a blank brand new Flutter project, uh, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is open our terminal and in our application's root directory, let's just go ahead and run Flutter pub add record. This will add the record package to our project, which is what we need to actually get access to that microphone input stream. Now with the dependency added, we wanna go ahead and request permissions for both the Android and iOS devices. So we'll start with Android here. Um, if you go to your Android directory, uh, go through app, source, debug, you'll find your Android manifest.xml file. Uh, within there, we're just gonna wanna go ahead and request the permission for recording audio. So we'll say uses permission and then Android permission.record audio. And then this will set it up so that way when we're using the record um, package that we had just imported, we will request permissions from an Android device. Now, as for iOS, the easiest way to go ahead and do this is to open the iOS project in Xcode. So if you right click iOS in your project navigator and hit open in Xcode, we're going to open um, Xcode into our project. And what we're going to want to do is navigate to our info.plist file. Uh, you can get there a couple different ways. You can get there by finding it in your project navigator, or you can also go into runner and then find the info section. And this can get kind of tricky, uh, mainly because it's not completely clear how to add uh, new key value pairs in your uh, target properties. So what we're going to do is just go anywhere in here and then click the plus button. And then we're going to be uh, adding an NS. So for the key, we're gonna say NS microphone usage description. And then the value for this will be whatever message we want to provide to the user when requesting microphone permissions. So we can just say, please enable to capture volume data. And that's what will be displayed on an iPhone when you request permissions um, with the record package that we had just imported. And now with that added, we can go ahead and close Xcode and then just go back to our project. Uh, within the main.dart file, what we're gonna wanna do is add our stateful widget and we'll call that mic page. And within our mic page state class, we're going to wanna create a couple of variables that we're gonna be using for application. First, it's going to be an instance of record from the record package. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we have that package record imported and we'll just call this my recording. And again, this will just be a new instance of the record package. And then we're also going to want timer and this will be nullable and we'll call this timer. And we will want to make sure that timer also is imported. You can get that from the Dart async library uh, as shown above. Now, the next thing we would want to do is go ahead and add our volumes. So we're going to want to keep track of our volume by uh, just kind of setting our volume variable equal to 0, 0.0. And then we will also want to set our minimum volume to negative 45. All right, with those variables added, we can now create our helper functions to help us retrieve information and also update our variables here with uh, data from our microphone input stream. So let's create a function called start timer. And this is gonna be asynchronous. And this is going to set our timer if it is null equal to timer dot periodic and we'll provide a duration and the duration will just say it'll strike every 50 milliseconds. And what it's going to do is it's going to call a function that we have not defined just yet, but it's going to call update, update volume. And go ahead and close that out. And what we can do from this point is go create our next function, which is actually the update volume function. So we'll say update volume is also going to be an asynchronous function 
And what this is going to do is start a reference to amplitude. So amplitude is going to also just come from that record package that we have imported. And we'll say amplitude AMPL is equal to await my recording. And then we'll say dot get amplitude. And then uh, from there, what we're gonna say is if our amplitude and then the current uh, value of the volume, if that is greater than min volume, and the minimum volume is what we had to find up above. Uh, what we're going to say is if that is the case, we're going to set the state and update our volume to the current amplitude. So we'll say volume is equal to amplitude, but we're not just going to set it equal to amplitude. We're going to normalize our data between a range of zero and one. So that way it's easier to use uh, throughout the application. So basically what we're going to have is a percentage value of our volume and our volume will re reference a percentage between zero and one. So 0.5 means 50%, uh, 0.25 means 25% and so on. So we'll say is volume is equal to ampl.current and then we're going to say minus minimum volume. And then we're also just gonna go ahead and divide that by our minimum volume. And now we basically just have our volume being a value. It's gonna be a double that's anywhere from zero to one. And from here, what we're going to want to do is also just provide some debug for our uh, purposes here in coding. And we'll just say we're going to want to print uh, volume. And then we can just use some string interpolation to get that volume in there. So we'll say volume. And then we'll just get that volume there. Cool. So now with update volume done, we'll go ahead and create our other helper function, which is called volume02. So we'll say int volume02, and then we'll say int max volume to display. And then what this is going to do is return our volume. And we'll multiply that times the max volume to display. And then we'll just go ahead and wrap that in some parentheses. And then we'll get uh, the rounded number here and then make sure that we're turning the absolute value. What this is doing is because our volume is in a range of zero to one, we can multiply that by some constant and then have it return a value that is basically a percentage of the max volume that we want to display. Now, the last thing we wanna do is create our future. Our future is going to be used to build our future builder in our widget. And specifically what we want it to do is kind of kick off the process while our application is loading. So what we're going to create here is a future that's going to return a Boolean. And our Boolean future is going to be called start recording. And this is also going to be asynchronous. And inside of here, we're going to say if await my recording dot has permission. So this is what's going to kick off the permission request process. So if our recording has permission, we know to move along and get started with the rest of this. Um, and then if await my recording dot is recording, but we want to make sure that we're not already recording before we start our recording. So we'll, we'll just do the negation of this. So if my recording is not currently recording, we will say await my recording dot start, and we'll start our recording. Now underneath uh, this if block, we'll go down to the first if block and we'll say, okay, it's time to start our timer. And then this will kick off the timer, which will actually kick off the update volume function call. And from this point, what we're gonna wanna do is underneath here, if we have reached this point, we can just return true. If we have not, we can just say else, return false. All right, so now with everything else complete and all of our helper functions and our variables ready to go, all we're gonna to need to do is update our widgets build method. And instead of returning a container, we're going to want to return a future builder and that builder uh, should have access to the context and the snapshot. And within here, we're also gonna to wanna to provide a value for our future. So our future is going to basically return what our start uh, recording function returns. So we're going to say future is just start recording. And now what we can do is actually, now we have to return a visible widget. 
So we have everything set up to return that. So within our future builder, we'll return a scaffold and our scaffold will have a body that is a center just to make sure that our text is displayed in the middle of our application and the child will just be a text view. And we can just close that off. And now because we have access to our snapshot and while we're at it, let's just make sure that we're being uh, specific about what our snapshot is. We'll say a seeing snapshot that's going to return a Boolean. We can say if our snapshot has data and we can just use a ternary operator here because we expect there to be two different scenarios here. Either it has data or it does not. If our snapshot dot has data, uh, what we will display is a, uh, what's it called? If it has data, we will call that function that we created previously, volume zero two with a max volume. And we will just say volume zero two. And then the, vac the max volume we want to display is 100. And we'll say to string. And if we don't have data, we'll just provide a string that says no data. So now uh, with our view built out, what we need to do is just go back up to our main function. And then in our material app, we can provide our microphone page uh, stateful widget class as a parameter into our material app home. So we'll say home is equal to mic page. And now we're ready to run our application. So now we can go into our terminal and just run flutter run and that will build and launch our application and I'll be back as soon as it launches. All right, great. So it looks like it's launching now and you can see that it's immediately asking for um, access to the microphone. And as soon as we provide it, um, it was for a brief moment displaying no data, but now that it has data, what it's going to do is actually display um, a number based on how loud uh, the volume is being picked up for the microphone. Uh, the last thing I suppose to do is to go in and style the text. I just make it look a little bit more like it did in uh, the first showing I had. So what we'll do is uh, start by providing a text align to our text widget. And we'll say text align is equal to text align dot center. And we'll also provide a style and our style will be equal to a text style. And that text style will have a font weight of font weight dot bold and it will have a font size of uh, just 42. So if I save this, uh, this is what it will look like um, in the actual widget and or the widget build method. And then if I reload, it's starting to look a little bit better. Let's just provide a little bit extra into here and let's just say uh, we'll say volume then backslash n to create a new line, and then we'll just add the volume. So this is what the final one should look like. And if I reload this, this is more or less what we started off with. And that's just about it for this video. Um, if I went over anything a little bit too quickly, I know I glossed over some concepts uh, surrounding like uh, what the variables do or where they came from, uh, or what some of those functions do, or you know how I came up with those functions. I have a Medium article linked down below, which dives a little bit deeper into uh, the thought process behind everything. Um, I'm also always open to feedback. Um, if you have any coding related tips for something I may have uh, neglected while working on this project, uh, please feel free to drop those in the description below. I really appreciate those because they help me as a programmer. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope I could be of some help. Again, GitHub repo is linked down below as well as that Medium article. Uh, but if that's all, I hope you have a fantastic day and take care. Peace.